Here's an example that uses non-conservative work. So let's say we have a ramp. Uh, I'm going to write this problem in words, and then we will draw a picture just for practice translating words to picture. All right, here's the problem. We have a one kilogram block sliding down a 10 degree ramp that has unknown friction. Maybe the friction is zero, maybe the friction is, you know, something else we don't know. Uh, the initial velocity of the block is zero, the final velocity of the block is 3.5 meters per second, and our ramp is five meters long in the diagonal direction. So what is the work done by friction in this case? All right, so let's draw a picture of, uh, of what's going on. I will erase this. And you should, you know, if you haven't already, you should practice drawing a picture of this to make sure you can do a good job of it, good skill to have. Okay, so our one kilogram block starts at the top of this ramp. It has slid down to the bottom, and at the bottom it has this 3.5 meters per second uh, velocity. So uh, if we want to find the work done by friction, we should, I mean, we could conceivably solve this as a force problem, but it's going to be hard if we don't know what, what mu is or what the friction looks like. In fact, doing it with energy, it doesn't even matter if we have lots of friction in one place and not very much friction in another place. So you could have you know, zero friction here, some friction here, some different friction here, and zero friction here, or something like that. You could have a, a frictiony patch on the ramp, and it's not going to change our approach to this problem with with energy. So that's kind of, that turns out to be kind of a neat uh, benefit of doing it with energy. Okay, so uh, if we want to look at the work done by, by the friction force, we should start by accounting for the energy in the problem. So at the beginning, in the initial uh, position of the block, what kinds of energy does it have? Well, its velocity is zero, so it doesn't have any initial kinetic energy. Uh, there are no springs in this problem, so us equals zero for all of it. Uh, our block does have gravitational potential energy, and for this, you know, this is mg y initial. We would uh, we need to know how high it is above the ground. We're not given that, but we do know enough to figure it out since that is like this side of this right triangle. This is the y initial, how far the block is off the ground. So that's going to be uh, the side opposite our 10 degree angle, so that's going to be 5 meters, the hypotenuse, times the sine of 10 degrees. Uh, so y initial, 5 times the sine of 10 degrees. So this is equal to uh, 1 kilogram times 9.8 times 5 times the sine of 10 degrees. If we put that into our calculator, we get 8.51 joules of gravitational potential energy. And that's uh, all the energy we have at the beginning. I guess I need an I on that also. All right, let's look at the end. So uh, at the end, our final kinetic energy, well, we have a velocity here, so now we do have a kinetic energy. It's, you know, our kinetic energy is always one half mv squared. Uh, our, I guess I'll just write that first, mv final squared. So this is one half times one kilogram times 3.5 meters per second squared. And this is equal to uh, 6.13 joules of kinetic energy. How much gravitational potential energy is at the end? All the blocks at the bottom of the ramp. So it is now at a height of zero and there are still no springs, so we're pretty much done with this little accounting exercise. So we can now put these into our, uh, our, our energy conservation equation. So we have a couple different versions of this. Uh, we'll look at both of them. So the first one looks like this. Delta K plus delta U equals uh, the non-conservative work. So delta U is u final minus u initial, so that's a zero minus 8.51. So delta u is minus 
one, that is our potential energy, you know, starts at 8.51, ends up at zero, so it's this negative change. The kinetic energy starts at zero and ends at 6.13. 6.13 minus zero is 6.13. So we have a positive change in our kinetic energy. And when we subtract those, we get uh, minus 2.38 joules of work done by non-conservative forces, or in this case, 2.38 joules of, of energy lost from our mechanical system. And that's it. This is the answer to the problem. Uh, let's also look at it with our other, uh, our other equations. That was uh, uh, k final plus u final equals k initial plus u initial plus the non-conservative work. So here, k final plus u final, that's the total energy at the end. This is 6.13 joules. And k initial plus u initial, the total energy at the beginning was 0 plus 8.51, 8.51 joules plus our work done by non-conservative forces. So we subtract 8.51 from both sides, and we get exactly the same equation from above. So uh, as long as we've done a good job of identifying how much energy we have at these different points, applying the conservation equation is generally very, very easy. As long as we you know, know what each of these pieces are, solving for whatever the unknown piece is, is not even hard algebra, right? <laughs> because you're just adding, um, you know, adding or subtracting these to, to find the, the non-conservative work. All right, great. Let's, uh, let's do one little extension of this problem to show why this might be useful in terms of other, other things we might be looking for. So we could use this result to find things, you know, <laughs> to find things besides just how much work is done. So let's say uh, that our friction, I said, I said this works for multiple different things that our friction looks like. So let's say that our friction actually looks like this. We have mu equals zero up to some point. And over here, mu also equals zero. So there's like really smooth ramp above and below, but then there's some stretch in between with friction that we don't know. And this part of the ramp, the rough part of the ramp, is two meters long. So if that's if that's the case, if uh, the if the rough part of ramp is two meters long. What is its friction coefficient? So, you know, mu zero here, mu zero here, here there is some unknown value for that two meter stretch. So, we can actually use the non conservative work to figure this out. Uh, and that's, and, and, I'll, and I'll show you how. Um, to, to justify this, we don't have to do this, but I'm going to take a moment to, to draw a free body diagram. So, for our block on the ramp, uh, we have our normal force like this, our friction force is perpendicular to that up the ramp, and we have gravity down. So uh, the work done by friction, in this case, is going to be you know, Fd cosine theta. So F is our force of kinetic friction. D is this diagonal distance, this two meters. And Theta here, if our friction is up the ramp, but we're moving down the ramp, that's 180 degrees. Just as promised, this should, you know, this should always be cosine of 180 degrees. <laughs> cosine of 180 degrees is minus one. So this is equal to minus force of friction times two meters. And our non-conservative work, since the friction is the only, the only piece that is doing this non-conservative work, there's not some other air resistance or something taking energy away, we know that this is equal to the work done by friction. So that means we can plug in minus 2.38 joules over here in our work equation, and then dividing both sides by minus two, we get that our kinetic friction is minus 2.38 over minus two, which equals 1.19 newtons. Now we are, uh, now we are in good shape to find this friction coefficient. So uh, we know that our kinetic friction, like our equation for kinetic friction, is the kinetic friction coefficient times 
the normal force. And we know that the normal force is equal to this perpendicular component of gravity because it's not, you know, the acceleration in this direction perpendicular to the ramp is zero. So our normal force is equal to gravity, that is 9.8 newtons, or you know, one times 9.8 mg, which is 9.8 newtons, times the cosine of 10 degrees. So this is our 10 degrees, this is the adjacent side, so that's cosine, and that is equal to 9.65 newtons. So, putting this all together, we are almost done with this. We know the force of friction, 1.19 newtons. That is equal to mu times our normal force, which is 9.65 newtons. So mu is equal to 1.19 over 9.65, and that is 0 0.12, and mu is unitless, so it's just 0 0.12. All right, so, so you know, the, the only new part was, was getting to here, uh, but I just wanted to show you how we can use this result to find out other things about the friction, in this case, the friction coefficient, you know, how, um, how sticky the ramp is or whatever. All right, so this is, you know, this is a pretty complete uh, energy problem. Uh, the only thing we could add was a spring, and let's just imagine how things would change if we did add a spring to this. So let's say at the top, there also was some spring, I'm just, I'm making a contrived change just to make this more complicated. So let's add a compressed spring there that's like storing some energy and ready to push the block down the ramp. The only thing that would change in our energy conservation equations is that we're going to add another u to each side, right? These were both gravitational potential energy. Um, and so we're also going to add some spring potential energy to each side. So we just add one extra term to each side, which makes this look really long, except um, if the spring is you know, done pushing on the block once the block leaves the spring, uh, the energy stored in the spring is going to be zero. So this term is actually zero, and um, the final energy stored in the spring, right, it uses up all its energy pushing on the block. And so really all we're adding is one more term to the right side of this equation. And, uh, and that would, you know, if this was a positive number, that would end up making our non-conservative work a little bigger, like a little bigger in magnitude, because if it's still only going 3.5 meters per second at the bottom and we're adding even more energy at the top, then friction must be taking away, you know, even more energy to keep it going the same velocity at the bottom. Anyway, that's just one, you know, <laughs> something like this would be the most complicated mechanical energy problem we um, we would be likely, likely to have. It's got it all, right? Ramp, spring, friction, gravity. Um, yeah. All right, great. So hopefully this was helpful, um, and and it's it's neat to see the the you know wide variety of problems we can apply uh, these energy conservation concepts to.